Again, good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church and Napoleon's online service. Um, it's good to see Angela back in the church and we continue to work on trying to improve our sound and video quality there at the church. I'm glad to see her there. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dear friends, now joined to Christ in the waters of our baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of our baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden in the desert. You promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water that is in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Now bow your heads as we pray together the prayer of the day, a prayer that's used by Christians around the world. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first of our readings today comes from the New Testament book of Acts of the Apostles, the second half of Luke's Gospel. And we're in the seventh chapter today. The story we'll be hearing is the story of the first martyr of the church, a man named Stephen. We begin at the 55th verse. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they, the crowd around him, covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. This is the end of this first reading. And we turn now to the book of Psalms, the great song book of the church, the 31st Psalm. And there are some selected verses. As you are in your home, you are welcome to read the bold uh, responses if you have downloaded the bulletin. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Never, let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. That psalm certainly is familiar to us, isn't it, as we hear Jesus on the cross. Uh, repeat just a little bit of that, and I think those who heard him probably heard the rest of that psalm in their heads. Now we move on to the second reading, which comes from the first letter of Peter, the second chapter, and we begin at the second verse here. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble 
and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Here ends our second reading. Thank you, Peggy and Angela. Our gospel lesson for today comes from John, the 14th chapter. We're reading verses 1 to 14. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father." I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. The grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, be with you all. Let me... Uh, begin by sharing a special greeting this morning to all the mothers that are listening. May the love of God strengthen you and bless you each and every day. A pastor asked a little girl who was four, are you worth anything? No, replied the little girl. Then he asked, why does your mother keep you then? The girl responded, oh, I know. Mom loves me. Mothers have done a good job of handing on the love that they have first experienced from God. The love that they have caught or were taught from a mother who loved them and who received her love from God. And so it goes on and on. As we live in the love of God, we hand on the love of God. 
Mothers have done an exceptional job of handing on that love of God and are to be commended for it. We thank God for you on this Mother's Day. Our text for this morning is from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. Jesus tells his disciples, all of us in this text, that he's going to prepare a place for each of us and that he will return to bring us to that place. When we wonder about the way to that place, he reminds us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We indeed are to follow Jesus. Our sermon theme for this morning is follow Jesus, our leader. This text, in some ways, reminds me of a childhood game I used to play called Follow the Leader. One person would take the lead, they would go wherever they wanted to go, and everyone would have to follow them. If one failed to follow them, they were out of the game. I can remember playing this game for hours, including jumping up on the chicken coop, running across the roof, and jumping down on the other side, trying to keep up with my leader, or in some cases, I would be trying to lose those who were following me. I can also remember playing this game with a group of young people in vacation Bible school when I led them on a journey underneath the church building. The church I was serving at the time had a crawl space underneath, so we ventured into that crawl space and then through the appropriate holes in the concrete block and on and on until we came to the very front doors of the church, looking at it from underneath. Then we gathered there for devotions and Bible study and sharing together. And this text from John 14 was often shared. And then came the fun part. I just simply turned off the flashlight and said, follow me. In total darkness, everyone needed to follow me in order to get out from underneath the church. They soon, soon learned that they needed to stay together. Some soon learned to uh, grab the ankle of the person in front of them. If they missed, then they were feeling along the block wall for some kind of opening to go through. Maybe it was the right one and maybe it wasn't. But they needed to follow their leader if they wanted to return from underneath the building. We never lost anybody, but on several occasions we did have to go back under and find someone. This gospel lesson is very much like that example. Jesus shows his disciples who he is, tells the disciples about this way of life, and then leads them forth in that life. We often reach a point, in a sense, where Jesus turns off the flashlight and says, follow me, just trust me. I am the way and the truth and the life. Where is Jesus taking us? Certainly, there is a destination, there is a route, and there's something very important that we must learn that if we are to follow Jesus, we need to stay very near to him, very, very close. If we should find ourselves far from him, we're liable to find ourselves in great difficulty. We may find ourselves easily lost, easily discouraged, and having trouble. It's important that one has a guide when venturing on a journey that they've never been on before. Jesus is our guide and leader. We look to him to lead us to our heavenly destination. We look to him to show us the way. Not only does he show us the way, but he is the way. Jesus wants to lead us. There are three things that all of us need to remember as he leads us. One, we need faith to believe that this Jesus has indeed gone before us, and has prepared a special place for us. We need faith to believe that Jesus has gone and make reservations enough to include us, each of us. We need faith to believe this Jesus will not let us down. In other words, we need faith as we follow our leader. A second important ingredient we certainly need as we follow our leader is love, the love of God that abides with us always and shines forth most brightly in life's darkest moments. We need to remember that 
God loves us, and that is why he sent his son to us. Jesus is this loving one who, as our leader, will not forget that we are following him. He will seek us out and help us to follow. He will love us along the way as we get scuffed and bruised uh, through the life that we're living. A third thing that is very important for us to remember as we follow our leader is that we must always have hope. Hope in God's plan for us, hope in Jesus. I suspect that people are a lot like those young folks that were following me out from underneath the church. Those who trusted me stayed close to me and came out smiling and laughing and even feeling like they wanted to go back under the church again. However, there were some who always wanted to venture off on their own way. They wanted to do their own thing and explore. One of them we found down in a pit underneath the church in total darkness, groping around. In fact, by the time we got him out, he was rather muddy. Doesn't that happen in life as well, that people kind of break off and do their own thing? They don't necessarily want to follow their leader. Or maybe they feel they have a better way of doing things. And yet, in his word, God has given us some clear instructions. And Jesus' words continue to guide us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. And yet, don't we all at some time or another still venture off and try to find our own way? I remember a time that I had to assemble some Christmas gifts. Some of you may have had that same problem where you had to assemble something that you bought at a store, got all the parts out before, and laid them out before you, and you started to put things together. Things went smoothly for a while, and then all of a sudden, you came across a part that just didn't quite fit. You then noticed that there were some other parts you had left that didn't fit either. You even discovered uh, you had a few extra pieces, almost threw those extra pieces away. Who needs them? And then out of the box came that little slip of paper that says, instructions. If all else fails, follow these instructions. God sends Jesus with our instructions to show us the way. God calls us to put our faith, hope, and love in him. Jesus is our leader. Those who have gone before us and have faithfully followed him have a place with him. So too, we look forward to that day when we will be united with him. I wonder if that day might not look uh, something like what happened when our young people came out from under the church. They were greeted by an excited group of parents who brought food to eat, love to share. Jesus is leading us to our eternal home where he will greet us with his love. Let us follow him. Amen. To our mothers, oh, we say that we thank you on this day and know you're always with us, Lord, to you we pray. To our mothers everywhere, may God keep Hold your hand forever, Lord.
Hey, kids, time to gather around. As you gather, I've got somebody that wants to say hi to you. I hope you can see them. So, how are you today? It's Mother's Day. I want to talk to you about that, but I want to, I, I got a question for you first. Have you ever wondered about heaven? Where is it? What's it like? Who lives there? Bible talks a bit about heaven and God has given us some hints about what it will be like. However, it's still a mystery to us because God is still preparing a place for us. At least that's what Jesus told his disciples before he went up to heaven. If you were listening to the gospel lesson as was read this morning, you, you heard that he was preparing a place for us up in heaven with many rooms and mansions. What do you think? Does that mean we're gonna have our own bedrooms? How many of you have your own bedroom at home right now? Maybe we'll have our own house. What will it look like? Well, what will it be made out of? God can use whatever he wants to build it. He can make, he can use gold, he can use diamonds, he can use amazing things that we've never seen. Maybe that's why the Bible doesn't give us a complete description of heaven. We wouldn't even be able to understand how amazing and beautiful it really is. Let's talk about some ways we get to heaven and how we can prepare to go there. Don't worry, you don't need to pack a suitcase. In fact, God specifically says that we shouldn't spend all our time on earth trying to collect a bunch of stuff because we can't take any of it with us to heaven. It may seem strange that we don't need to take any of our things like our favorite toy or a doll, toy truck, or even, do I dare say, a change of underwear. God will give us everything we need plus a whole lot more. We won't get bored in heaven because God knows what we need and he is getting it all ready for us. In our story today, one of Jesus' disciples asked Jesus how to, about how to get to heaven. Jesus answered in a kind of strange way. Did you hear what he said? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That might sound like something strange. Um, you know, what do you think he said? Hmm. Uh, he, basically, he says that if we believe in the Bible and believe that Jesus died and rose again, then you believe in the truth and he will bring you to heaven. We don't have to get there. Jesus is going to bring us there. The best part of all is what heaven is going to be like. There'll be no more death, no more sadness. There won't be any crying, no pain. You won't even skin your knee there. Everything will be made new and there won't be any more fighting or crying ever. That sounds pretty neat. As you can see, heaven is a fabulous place to be with God. God loves us even more than our parents and promises to take the best care of us ever. You know that he made us and he wants to be with us. Now, I wanna to talk to you about another, another, another thing. Today is a special day. Who can tell me what it is? That's right, it's Mother's Day. This is a day when we can tell our moms and even our grandmas how much we love them. My boys are grown now. I know that they will each call me today. I've even gotten some gifts in the mail from them this week. Most of you would have made something special for your mom in school. Maybe your family would normally take your mom out to eat so she doesn't have to cook today. Did any of you make her breakfast in bed this morning? Would you do something for me? After church today, draw a picture for your mom. Maybe make her a homemade card. If you didn't give her breakfast in bed this morning, maybe you can tomorrow, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son to show us the way to heaven. Thank you for making a special place for us to live with you in heaven. Thank you for giving us moms to help take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See you guys, bye. Thank you, Miss Denise. I kind of wondered about that way of getting to heaven, so you explained it pretty well. Jesus will take us there. Well, actually, he takes those who believe there. And so now we're going to join together, all of us who can. We're joined already in the waters of our baptism, and we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And that empowers us to be able to confess 
how much we do believe. And we use some words we're used to, the words of the Apostles' Creed. So kids, if you know them, you can join in. And I'll ask the parents in your home to lead you as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we come to a time of prayer, uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection. We join all the people of God in all times and all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Our response this morning to Lord in your mercy will be hear our prayer. Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen us as we gather virtually, and then help to pro us to proclaim your love in creative ways while we are still safer at home. We pray especially for our community and surrounding countryside, and for all your people who are separate from one another and need your strengthening hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the natural world you have made. And here we include things like volcanoes and ocean currents and tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and our local spring storms. All things that both destroy and create. May we walk through this world gently, and steward it for your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, compassionate God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety from viruses and other terrors. Grant them your wisdom, love, and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heal us, miracle-working God. Help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. And now we pause to name those who in our are in our hearts and our minds, and we can name those in our hearts or out loud. In the middle of the night, when the news of the day overwhelms us, let your spirit sigh for us and hold us tight and give us rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to our needs, nurturing God. We pray this day especially for mothers, for those who tend and teach children, both young and old, for those who carry the soon to be born, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us faith, eternal God, that you will call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us joy in the midst of grief as we trust in the promise of eternal life where we might worship and adore you forever. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us this day to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and amen. We have a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, your church council has been meeting regularly, and uh, they will be meeting again a week from Monday in a Zoom meeting in order to discuss uh, how we move forward. And at the moment, uh, it has been decided that we will be continuing our online services uh, at least through May 31st. And uh, then we'll uh, soon see where we go from there. Um, so know that your church council is working hard to make those right decisions to keep us moving in the right direction. And we are continuing to work at trying to get uh, sound quality and vision quality uh, up at the church so that uh, Angela can continue to, to play there and we can make some moves in that direction. Uh, for those of you who were wondering about the Red Cross drive that was to be held at the church in June, that has been canceled and will not take place. Um, this is a, a challenging, but yet at the same time, an exciting time. Uh, the call committee uh, has a couple of meetings uh, this week, um, hopefully uh, even an opportunity to uh, meet one candidate uh, in a sort of a face-to-face -face meeting using social distancing and wearing masks and those kind of things. Uh, so we continue to remember the call committee uh, in our prayers. Also uh, remind you, uh, there's always an opportunity to give to those who are in need uh, through the church. And the church's address is Emanuel Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 501, Napoleon, Ohio, 43545. So we continue to keep um, others in our prayers as well. Uh, we know there's a multitude of needs uh, in our community and in our country and in our world. Now, receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I want to thank all that uh, participated in this this morning's worship. Uh, big thank you to Angela and Peggy and Denise and Janine. Uh, you all added to our service this morning and is greatly appreciated. So now, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.